Hello, it's Stuart, the Unrepented Atheist. Thank you very much for tuning into my channel. I've got a clip here from the Atheist Experience, which was broadcast on the 23rd of April 2023. We've got Dave calling in, and I've heard Dave, I have heard Dave's voice before. Maybe you have. I remember him calling in, and I think it was Matt that he was speaking to. Um, something to do about a course on eschatology that he'd been asked to teach. I can't remember entirely how that call went, but I'm fairly certain this is the same person. I've got a very good memory for voices, and I do believe that this is him. So have a listen. He's calling in, um, effectively questioning the sort of standards of evidence that atheists tend to require and he's made the statement that um, he cannot 100% prove that God exists. You often hear this from theists. I can't 100% prove that God exists. Now, to be fair, J. Mike uh, actually dealt with this, and he said that we're not asking for 100% proof. Uh, we, we, we don't tend to in life require 100% proof for almost anything at all, except maybe you know, in mathematics. What we require is sufficient evidence, so there's no need to talk about 100% 100 proof. I personally think it's laughable, because they say, I haven't quite, it's like they've got 99% proof, but they haven't got 100% proof. And in reality, they haven't even got half a percent proof. So, but this call really does take a bizarre turn towards the end. So we're coming in at about 15 minutes, Enough from me. Let's get going. I don't know, the distribution of allele frequencies or whatever, some intelligent design kind of notion. If you have that, then presumably we could make predictions off the hypothesis and we could get success off those predictions. And that's a really good reason to think that your hypothesis is working or your model is working. And so, um, yeah, I think that we have options for that. I think that there's ways that you could take those principles and use them. It just seems that like what we're doing is sidestepping like a really an extremely rigorous process or at least components of those and I, that's just not as interesting to me it's like okay well if you have something else i mean just i don't know offer that but i don't, really I don't my, think it's really my yeah, problem I'm, you know yeah, I'm, I'm 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 not tr I, i'm always waiting for a pause for me to interject so I'm not <laughs> now i'd like to say something uh Richard and J and J. Mike are very long-winded. Once they start talking, it's difficult to stop them. I've actually got some sympathy with the callers on this show, several of whom commented, "I'm waiting for I'm waiting for a chance to talk." Uh, once they get going, particularly uh, Richard, uh, it's difficult to shut him up. He doesn't really seem to know when to stop talking uh, and to condense down the point that he's making and allow the caller because after all we want to hear more from the caller not the not the hosts so i have to actually agree uh with the frustration of this particular caller they're very uh long-winded today at least both of them are i don't like talking over people so i'm just <laughs> oh yeah that's okay I'm yeah i'm just waiting for, waiting for you to finish as as <laughs> you can hear you <laughs> He is uh, he's completely fed up. You can hear you can hear the anger in his voice. <laughs> I hear you pause for a few seconds, then I then I'll talk. But until uh, yeah, I'll, stop talking, I'll let I'll, I'll say it over. I'll say it over, Dave. Just there he goes again. He's starting again. He won't shut up and let him talk. It's like uh, it's almost like when Matt is uh, you know trying to get people to shut up. If if the caller could put J Mike on hold, he might actually be able to get somewhere. Yeah, I'll say it over just to, to help help out. But yeah, um, anything you want to add? I mean, I don't know. I kind of want to move on to other callers. You know, time is so precious. I know you're probably thinking, oh, Stuart, you're wasting our time here. We want to listen. Why don't you shut up? Okay, I'll shut up. Or at least, or maybe if you have reasons to believe, we can get into a more, I don't know, in-depth conversation there on that. But if not, um, I don't know, Richard, if you want to say anything, but... Uh, yeah. Over. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I mean. Well, I, yeah. I'd. I'd be interested in kind of investigating some of the some of the reasons that you believe, if you want to do that. But you know, if if you were just calling, as Mike said about. Do you take my point? This is absolutely unbelievable. These two are just completely and utterly wasting time. 
I think they must be the worst pairing I've ever seen on the atheist experience, and that's saying something. Just having that conversation about science, then, you know, give us a call back for some of the reasons another time. But I'm happy to go into one or two of them now if you want to, if you want to do that. No, and again, I, I just haven't had a chance to even make a statement <laughs> in that regard, but I do, sure. from, from understanding if God exists, I don't believe that that scientific method is a, is a way to do it. I can't I can't set up something that is testable that might happen in the future, other than maybe his return. We can talk about it, but that's based on historical events. Um, what I would be looking at is that to talk about whether to convince me whether God exists or not. The only way I can do it is kind of a a, a missing body, dead body approach from a an investigative standpoint from uh, the same way that they w would do a cold case and prove somebody guilty for murder. You can only do it on circumstantial evidence, and that's about the only way I can approach it. And quite frankly, why I believe God does exist and, that, and all, all the things that I said I believe in. Uh, just by lining up a whole, whole lot of stuff historically and then sizing it up and saying, what's the probability? Uh, okay, verdict, I'm guilty. I believe that God exists because of the lining up of a lot of historical information and it's going to saying, yeah, what's the probability that he... It's like a sort of a meta discussion, this, isn't it? It's like they're sort of d discussing the discussion and why can't he just lay his evidence out? He doesn't exist. I guess I believe that he does exist. So we, we can't... I don't think we can get into it today. I just wanted to first call <laughs> in... Uh, he's been on the line for about 15, 16, 17 minutes. I think all three of them are as useless as each other. And, and at least I now understand that I will never have a conversation with the atheist experience trying to prove something that's testable. The only thing so, I can well, do is do it Dave, just be, just circumstantially, <laughs> circumstantially and then come to a conclusion based on circumstantial evidence. That's it. Dave, just before we let you go, I'd, and I appreciate that, and you know, you, you've been very cordial, and I appreciate that as well. And you know, I'd, and I'd love to have that conversation about that historical evidence. Uh, you know, one of the times you call in the future. But just before you go, what do you think about what we've said about that that point where the kind of the supernatural entity interacts with the world? Do you agree that we should be able to investigate that point using the scientific method and at least find an anomaly there? All right. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> this may seem a little weird. I wouldn't have gone down that route. I would have said, uh, we've still got a few minutes. Give me your strongest uh, piece of circumstantial evidence and we'll take it from there. I wouldn't have gone down this route, but it's not my show. To you guys, but... Um, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on your point of view, my family lineage goes back generations in being involved in satanic worship. Um, my generation specifically being, well, me, I guess I broke the to, chain. To, to me, to me, that's, <laughs> was, to me, Dave, that's sure. like saying, but the, Dave, to, you understand to us, it's like saying in my family, we had people that worshiped like Garfield or something like, it's like, it just. It's fake and fiction to us, so it doesn't really matter in that sense. Yeah, well, the problem with it, guys, is that uh, it involves the interaction with demonic beings where they actually get physically involved, and that is testable, and I'll tell you what, that's a road down which... So why I, haven't we seen that? I mean, I can tell you, what, like, and you can get involved in it, but I was seriously and highly... This is absolutely unbelievable. He's been coming on. He's come on. He said that uh, he has not got any testable evidence for the existence of God. He said that it's all circumstantial. And he spent 15, 16, 17 minutes on this saying that he can't absolutely prove. He can't provide any empirical evidence. And now he's saying that there are demons that there are actually real demons who will be in the room with you, and this is testable. Why didn't he come to that at the start of the call so that we could start the process of investigating it? Okay, it may not be God, but I mean, for goodness sake, it's demons. And if it could be proven that demons exist, then, well, 
it kind of leads, le lends some credence to the idea that there might be a God. I mean, it's quite a startling thing. I would not recommend it because... But, but you don't need to tell us about it as to get involved because those instances of that happening have been investigated. And the, as far as I know, no, there's never been one scientific conclusion which has stated that they are supernatural events. No, yeah, and, and Dave, I'm, I'm not saying, I don't know what I don't know what stories you've been told or what events that you've been talked about. I can this would be front news and, and other people, and, and that this. you could in it. And, and and but I'm telling you, you don't want to do that. Well, you would want to do that. I I would want to do that. I would want to get involved with demons. If there are demons out there, um, if anybody's watching and you know of any demons that I could come along and test, I can bring along some uh, recording equipment. Um, I'm not afraid of demons. If there are demons out there, I want to go out there. I want to be world famous, prove that they exist. It's not a case of I'm prepared to take the risk that I'm going to be like in The Exorcist. I'm going to be possessed by demons. I'll take that risk. Believe me, if I can prove that demons exist, I'll be world famous. I'll make uh, huge amounts of money. Yeah, but that that warning is is it's kind of the complete nothing burger to us. Yeah, it's very that, that's, that's like saying you know if you know if, you, well, if okay. you're not very good, you're going to go to hell when you. Yeah, don't look under the bed. The bogeyman's there die and and it just means nothing <laughs> you don't it, want to it, go there it, it, <laughs> that's funny he's saying that to two atheists yeah and my family was involved in satanic worship i broke that chain um demons are real they will actually interact with you in the room but believe me you don't want to go there it's not kind of it's not the thing you think it is to us it's, you know if, if there's if there's a chance if there's a chance that there is something happening here that that could provide evidence and and could be used uh, could be investigated using the scientific method, that's the first place we want to go, not somewhere we want to stay away from. <laughs> exactly right. I'll give him some credit there for what he said. I know I said he was a bit long-winded, but he absolutely hit the nail on the head there. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm just i'm just saying i my personal recommendation is that you don't go down that road but if you're talking about <laughs> testability that you personally personally you, each of you guys individually would want to know about that's a road you could go down and believe me it's testable through your but own that wasn't, experience okay well now i mean i'm a businessman okay i'm good at negotiating and when somebody puts an offer on the table, I'm very good at closing the deal. I want to take them up on it. And in my opinion, they should be saying, okay, well, we need to arrange something here. Uh, we would like to come and test this. We would like it to be under proper test conditions. Can we make an arrangement to come and visit you? Or can you take us to a place where we can test for the existence of these demons? I would actually be negotiating with him now because... He's actually said something which is interesting. Of course, I don't believe a word of it, but they should be negotiating to actually go and test this claim. Dave, the, the question I asked you was relating to the scientific method uh, testing these interactions of su the supernatural realm interacting with our realm. And uh, could, the su could the scientific method that we have be used to detect an anomaly. Okay, well, I'm going to stop there now because he's actually going to go and spend about two, three minutes uh, talking about this, about the um, how it would be tested, etc. And I think they end up hanging up on him. Uh, so I just thought you might find that really amusing. I found it hilarious how he came on, said, I haven't got 100% proof of the existence of God. It can't be tested, etc. Well, I've got a circumstantial evidence. So, hmm, you know, take too long to go through all the points. And then he's telling us that demons exist, but don't go down that route. As Gull uh, Gulliver said, that's exactly where we want to go. <laughs> hilarious. Okay, I'd love to know your comments on that call. Um, I thought it was very funny. Be back soon. Bye.